Okay, hello. Um, this is just a test video to show you how my voice is approximately eight weeks now post op and how it sounds. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm supposed to go through uh, voice therapy next. And so, yeah, my hair is a mess. I've been working out. Um, I hope the light's not too bright. I'm trying to show you what I had done. See? On the hairline revision, let me do this. See that? Yeah, it, it brought my receding hairline further forward. And now I'm just going to have to fill in with hair transplants. Which, you know, I hear is about four to 6,000. Yeah, that's what's next for me. But pretty much I'm done on everything. I might do a neck lift next, but I'm just gonna wait a couple of years and pay off some pay off the bills. But yeah. In July I had the hairline revision, brow bossing, brow bone bossing they call it. Let's see. If you can get a good look at what I had done. Oh, and I had the mid face lift, which is Basically, they cut along the ears right here. Well, hairline, and then came down and to the ears, and then down the front of the ears, and they basically took my face and went, <coughs> yeah. And all this was swollen, as you can see. Now, when I got home, I put on, I, I ordered a, a compression mask because I had lumpy. My face was still lumpy. I tried, you know, icing it daily. You know, but it wasn't really wasn't getting the swan to go down. So I bought a compression mask off of Amazon, and then I wore that as I slept. Now, yeah, it takes some getting used to wear, but yeah, and, uh, and that that really helped. And then I remembered when I, the first time I went to Bangkok and I had the, my nose done and my chin and my jawline, they had me in a compression mask the whole time I was there and they said wear it for six or eight weeks so or no three months and then, you know because they really ground I had a, such a really square prominent prominent uh what do you call it jawline and they you know as you can see they I think they did pretty good now I'm 50 I'll be 51 in December so this is the results of you know so yeah, I, I came out five years ago, transitioned, and I've been on, yeah, four and a half years, I believe, on hormones. So, yeah. Also, diet is a big thing for transition. You're going to have to quit smoking, and I would cut out the alcohol. I mean, you can cut it, cut it down significantly, but smoking, you, you, you are going to have to cut out the smoking if you smoke. Because it, you know, especially if you're gonna, if you're planning on having the voice surgery. So yeah, I had such a deep mo uh, monotone voice, and now it's you know, it's a higher pitch. But it's not quite there. They said finish it with you know voice therapy. I mean, so my spouse she says it's more. It's not such a deep husky manly sound now, but it's more of a, like a younger boy's sound. So. I'm um, half, I, I think that's half the battle for, you know, on the voice stuff. So, I will have to finish with training the voice to get feminine. This will get me there. So, anyways, I just want to make a quick update video to show you where my results and how I've done. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I'm, I've, I've had done so far. And I'm pretty happy with it. You can see, and on my nose. My nose got broken twice in childhood, and it was like way out there, and now it's like, you know, you can see it. Now, I may go back in and have them do the nose tip, because it's like really round, big, and just bring it in, see, so if you can see, I don't know if that helps. But yeah, these are my results, and the doctor said, it was like, due to age, maybe 80% at best. And you know what? I think they hit 100%. I mean, my voice gigahertz was like 120, 122, and women's is 
around 260. And they said, we're going to try and get it between 200, 202 and 3. And they hit 302. And that was, you know, and I couldn't speak for 10 days. They said, don't speak, don't cough, don't sneeze, don't do anything. Rest the vocal cords for 10 days. And then I go back in the doctors and they, you know, and they had me do that thing to test it. And let me tell you, the, the, what they do, they stick that probe down your throat. That fucking gags you. So, yeah. If you have a gag, a, ba a severe gag reflex, I would practice putting something down your throat about the size of a pen like that. Just don't swallow it. Anyways, and they just put it down your throat, and they put it down your throat, and then they say, how do you say, E or Ah, and then it shows the vocal cords in that. I, uh, at the hospital, I, I, I signed a release for the doctor, or Dr. Or, or Obama or Omaha. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. But uh, I signed a release to show my before and after results. So go to yanhihospital.org.com, I don't know, and uh, check it out. You should be able to see it. See my before and my afters. So, yeah. Yeah, and they're really cool, super cool at Yanhi Hospital. And, you know, even at the Dr. Chetto when I had my SRS and all this stuff. And, Shannon knows. There, everyone's really cool. I, mean, I I highly recommend going to Bangkok and getting your stuff done. It's not only cheaper because of the currency conversion rates is in your favor, but it, the SRS it's going to cost you just as much as in the states, but you're going to have zero complications. Zero complications. Now you're going to have to remember this. Give yourself five months to recuperate if you can. Three at minimum. And I can't stress that enough. I mean, I took I took four and a half, five months off, and I was, you know, and you're going to need it. Especially all the stuff I had. And you said you're going to have, like, you know, a dozen procedures done in November. Yeah, take off as much time as you can afford because you're going to need it. And take a friend with you. That's the number one because you're going to be out of it. You're going to, your, your emotions are going to be all over the board. And, yeah, take someone that you absolutely trust with your life. Because, you know, they're going to be, like, going out and getting your food for you, bringing it to you. And they're going to be, like, dealing with everyone for you. And it's like, yeah. Take a good friend or spouse and it's like, yeah, you know, and just, you know you'll, you'll be fine. You'll, you'll be, you know, they, Bangkok people are the friendliest people on the planet. And it's like, they are very nice people. And it's like, yeah. Don't talk politics to anyone over there. Don't, you know. Just, you know, oh, yeah, if you're going for the SRS, it's like, you're going to be, they'll, you know, discharge you, and then you stay in your hotel, stay in your room, you know, for however long they tell you. Well, the first time I went there, they told me to stay in a room for three weeks, and it's like, I was there for 33 days. So, I, you're going for medical stuff, you're not going to do any sightseeing before or after. I mean, if you want to see sights, do it the day before, or, you know, the day, you know, before. But, uh, yeah, that's what we were planning to do, do some sightseeing and that. And they said, well, we had a cancellation, so we're going to move you up. And it's like, oh, my God, I want to do some sightseeing. And it's like, sorry, not this time. So, which was, it was still cool. But, yeah. I highly recommend Dr. Chetua, Dr. Thawachi, and Dr. Or Orama. Or 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 they're super cool, and they are, they're the friendliest people on the planet. Yeah, not like these American doctors. Pfft. Fucking egos. They rip you off. They fuck you up. Yeah, I've heard complaints upon complaints about American doctors. Even fucking Canadian doctors. I don't know what it is. I don't. People have said they've had complications, and it's like I had zero complications as much as I've had done. Come on, what the fuck are they doing? And it's like you know, it's, I don't know. But hey, this is just my opinion. This is what I've gone through, and this is just what I've heard about the other doctors. So I don't know about experience with those people, but I've heard complaints, and I've had zero complaints. So yeah, and let me tell you, down there, it's damn near identical to any other natural woman. I thought it's like I was always, you know, and it's like, you know, it's like, does that look right? It's like, you know, I was having buyer's remorse. 
six months after, and then it's like, I was on this porn site, and I seen a woman's who, you know, who, who, you know, vagina, and it's like, it just looks like exactly like mine, and it's like, damn, it was a amateur porn site. Anyways, I ain't gonna say why I was on there. I was just on. There. Yeah, I was looking at different variations of you know vaginas and stuff. I just wanted to see you know what different variety. Yeah, okay. Anyways, they said that's like yeah, it just looked just like hers, and it's like yeah. I even talked to that couple, and it's like, yeah, they were like, yeah, it's like, yeah, I've hit that put, you know, every day for years, and it's like, oh, it's like, okay, after that, I was happy with what I had. <laughs> Anyways, <sighs> that was a mouthful. I'm gonna end this video now, and uh, all I can say is, good luck, and uh, be strong. All right? Goodbye.